Hey guys, do it. CGF here once again with another Giants video. We have a hot button topic to talk about tonight. Should the New York Football Giants draft JJ McCarthy at number six? Should they do it? Should they not do it? What do you guys think? Just to refresh your memory, the last time the Giants drafted a quarterback at number six, this happened. <laughs> With the sixth pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Daniel Jones, oh, quarterback. Hey. Two. They took Daniel Jones over Josh Allen and Dwayne Haskins. How the fuck did this happen? Daniel Jones, how to do No! Just so you know. ESPN rated Daniel Jones as a zero-star recruit. Coming out of Why would you do that? You're so fucking stupid. Oh, no. Let's go. Let's go. Daniel Jones, quarterback. Let's go. Daniel Jones. What are you doing? What are you doing? I just want to take a second. Yo, these beans are good as hell. <laughs> Hold on, Mina Kimes is the first person to ever. <laughs> oh no! 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 They did not take Daniel Jones! Are you fucking kidding me? Well, the Giants have a decision to make. Do the New York Giants at number six, if Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Drake May are off the board, do the New York Giants, if J.J. McCarthy is sitting there, do the New York Giants do it again? Do they tempt fate? That is the question. I don't know. I'm telling you, I don't know. This being Combine Weekend, and a lot of chatter coming out of Indianapolis saying the New York Giants, perhaps, if he's available, could draft J.J. McCarthy. Now, I could understand it. If you look at J.J. McCarthy's collegiate career, he led the Michigan Wolverines to three straight Big Ten Conference titles. He beat Ohio State three times after Michigan just could not beat Ohio State. He finished his career at Michigan with a 27-1 and record as a starter, which in the history of FBS, college football, third best winning percentage by a quarterback. The only quarterbacks to finish their college career with a better winning percentage were Chuck Ely, Jimmy Harris. You know, <laughs> and even Jim Harbaugh, even Jim Harbaugh, the New coach at LA Chargers, who was once a quarterback at Michigan, said that he believes McCarthy is the greatest quarterback in Michigan football history, even greater than the great Tom Brady. This is what he said. He said, and I'm quoting this I've said it before, but right here, this is the greatest quarterback in. University of Michigan college football history. Got a long way to go to get where Tom Brady eventually got to, which is the GOAT. But in a college career, there's been nobody better than JJ. I know we talk about an amalgamation of quarterbacks. He is that guy. He's that guy. He is. So do the Giants, the New York Giants, who 
made a controversial quarterback pick back in 2019. I just played the draft reaction of Daniel Jones from national media, fans, top content creations in the Giants community. Do the Giants risk it? Because J.J. McCarthy is a polarizing character. He's a guy, depending on who you talk to, some people, like myself, believe he's going to be a really good pro. I believe, and we'll go over briefly what I said a couple of weeks ago when I did my prospect profile on him. I believe J.J. McCarthy may not be the best quarterback prospect in this draft from a measurables perspective, but I do believe he's the guy who has the most upside, the guy that has that it factor, that factor that you just can't really explain. It's something that just emanates from him. I was watching the combine this weekend, and I can tell you, I, I sense it, okay? And, and you only see it with certain guys. You see it with Aaron Rodgers. You see it with Patrick Mahomes. saw it with Tom Brady. You saw it for some time with Russell Wilson. saw it with Joe Montana. You There is a an aura, okay? There is a attitude that quarterbacks emanate. And listen, I understand that it's a crapshoot, okay? I went over this, and if you guys haven't seen it, take a look. I did a profile review of every first-round quarterback since 1998. And there were plenty of busts. I would say 34%, one-third of all quarterbacks drafted since 1998 have wound up being busts, first-round quarterbacks. You had a couple of elite guys, guys like Mahomes, Rodgers, Lamar Jackson, Peter Manning. You had a bunch of really good guys, like borderline Hall of Fame-level guys like Phillip Rivers, Ben Roethlisberger, Eli Manning, guys who are in the league right now like Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow. And then you had a bunch of average NFL career journeyman quarterbacks, guys like Carson Palmer, Matt Ryan, guys like that, guys that weren't bad but weren't great, guys like Michael Vick who could have been elite, who ran into legal problems. You had a bunch of guys that have backup quarterbacks, guys that haven't amounted to what they were expected to amount to. Guys like Sam Darnold. And then, of course, you have busts. And there's a lot of them. So the Giants are in this situation right now where Daniel Jones is coming off a torn ACL. He had a really bad 2023. You just extended him. Do you jump off into the deep end of the swimming pool? Do you take the risk? Do you take the risk on J.J. McCarthy based on what he's done? Even his combine, his shuttle time today, or his cone time yesterday was one of the best. You know, his throws was a mixed bag. But do you do you take a chance on him? Do you see an untapped potential there? Do you... Let him marinate behind Daniel Jones for one season and then turn over the keys in 2025 and have Dable have the opportunity to get him prepared. Because apparently the Giants met with him and they just told him, hey, here's the whiteboard. We're going to tell you what our terminology is. You tell, tell us what you think and let's work together on this. And apparently the meeting went really well. So let's talk a little bit about McCarthy, some of his strengths and weaknesses. I'm going to tell you guys right now, these are the things I talked about when I did my prospect profile on him. You can take a look at it in the archives if you haven't done so already. And I just talked about the it factor, okay? There's not many quarterbacks I feel have that it factor. He has that it, it factor. Athleticism plus athleticism plus quickness and agility. Solid arm mechanics. He can deliver accurate passes from multiple arm angles. He also throws... Well, on the run with accuracy. If you watch my film review of J.J. McCarthy when I did my prospect overview, I show some of that. 
Here's some of the negatives, okay? Some of the negatives, the weaknesses. He has a slender frame. He can invite injuries at the NFL level. Arm straight is not remarkable. He can make the deep throws. We saw that. We saw that at the combine. He can throw the ball down the field. Arm straight's not going to be that much of an issue, but it's not Josh Allen level. Lack of drop back passing reps could cloud his future. Okay. Jim Harbaugh relied more on a pro style running game. It wasn't really relied on him to basically command the offense. That's just not what Michigan was doing. But you look back at games this past playoffs, he, what he did against Alabama was very impressive. He went toe to toe with Alabama. And when he was needed to shine, he did. He does have a tendency of throwing passes in its tight coverages. That's something he's done in the past. It's something that he needs to work on on the pro level. And he has no experience elevating mediocre talent. I mean, go back to high school. In high school, he was a 26-2 record at Nazareth Academy, which is in the suburbs of Chicago. He played well at, at, at there. He also played well in college. Never really had to elevate – a subpar team. And listen, I don't know what the Giants are going to be coming into if he waits until 2025, but he hasn't shown the ability to elevate at least mediocre teams. I think he, there is a little Daniel Jones in him. He will play it safe sometimes and avoid taking deep shots, leaving points on the board. So the Giants have a decision to make. They have a big decision to make because Early on, people said, you know, and I even said it, I said I'd be comfortable drafting him late in the first, early in the second. But when quarterbacks come out, even though you may give a guy a draft grade that's higher, when you like a guy and you feel he fits and you see that it factor, sometimes you have to make that move. And if the Giants don't make a move for McCarthy at six, they're probably going to have to trade up ahead of the Denver Broncos and the Minnesota Vikings, and the Las Vegas Raiders. Three teams that most likely will be looking at him. He won't make it past 12, because that's where the Denver Broncos will be picking. So do the Giants roll the dice? Do they select Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze or Joe Walt if he's there, if he doesn't go to the L.A. Chargers? Do they go with that and then they just go all in and they try to trade up with the Tennessee Titans, try to get that seventh pick. And who knows what the Atlanta Falcons are going to do. Everyone's assuming the Falcons are going to trade for Justin Fields, but if they don't trade for Justin Fields, expect them to be active as well. Because if you look at the landscape of the top 10 picks, you have the bears at nine, which is a prime trading opportunity for a team who wants to move up perhaps. And the Jets are at 10 who need offensive linemen. So my feeling right now, and I said this on the Big Blue View message board today, I actually was having a conversation about it because Ed Valentine was talking about it. I think if the Giants really feel strongly, and I don't know what Dable and Shane are thinking right now. I don't know this is the season of smoke screens, but if Dable and Shane feel strongly about J.J. McCarthy and they believe he's going to be as good or better than Daniel Jones, you got to make the move. You're going to have to go for it at six and you'll have to deal with the consequences. Now, feeling the temperature of the room, talking to some people, talking to some people on X, it seems like the sentiment is a little less unfavorable for J.J. McCarthy than Daniel Jones was. You saw the reactions to Daniel Jones. I assume if J.J. McCarthy is drafted at six, there will be some negative reactions, but not to the level and extent that Daniel Jones suffered back in 2019. Now, in retrospect, it's understandable. Daniel Jones was coming from a one-read cut-cliff system. J.J. McCarthy's coming from a pro-style system where he had to make multiple reads. So it's a little different, okay? Daniel Jones, and I talked about this with my film review when I did the All-22 review for 2023. One of the biggest crimes from this last season of Daniel Jones, and I still love Daniel Jones, is that Brian Dable went away from what worked. Okay, if you watch the second half of the Arizona Cardinals game, Daniel Jones, when they were implementing RPO, 
play action concepts. Daniel Jones was on fire. Okay. That's his bread and butter. That's what he was good at in college. That's what they kind of did last season. And they went away from it because Brian Dable wanted to a quarterback that could have complete command in a pro style offense. And that's just not Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is a one read quarterback. He's a guy that you need to get the ball out of his hand. He needs to be an RPO motion type sets where he gets in the zone. And when he's in the zone, he is a guy that is very hard to stop. Okay. And that's the biggest crime from this season. Cause you know, I've talked about how much I support Daniel Jones. I love the guy. I think he's a good dude. I think he has talent, but my issues with Daniel Jones, my complaints have always been inside here. Okay. Inside the head. Cause Daniel Jones, you match him up with Lamar Jackson talent wise running, running ability. He's as good. You know, Daniel Jones has had some really good games. You look at that second half of the Arizona game. He has the ability. Even go back to his first game against the Tampa Bay Bucks in 2019. He has the ability to succeed in the NFL. And that's why people call him an enigma. That's why people are unsure. They were saying, hey, wait, is Daniel Jones really this good? Or is he or is he not? I mean, you listen to the Charlie Bacchiano call on the Giants huddle back last week when they did their impromptu press conference with Joe Shane. And that's one of the things he talked about when he called in and he was asking Joe Shane, he said to Joe Shane, Hey, you know, we know all about the Minnesota Vikings game for the playoffs. And, but, but we have plenty of examples where Daniel Jones just wasn't very good. You look back at the playoff game against Philly. You look at the game against Dallas early last season. There've been plenty of situations where Daniel Jones has looked terrible. But then we also remember games that Daniel Jones also played very well. The game in London against Green Bay, the Tennessee Titans game, the Baltimore Ravens game last season, the Washington Commanders games that the Giants had to win, the Indianapolis Colts game where they were chanting DJ's name. It's a shame. It hurts me. But I'm not going to sit here and and just ride with Daniel Jones to the end. I, Listen, I hope he comes back next season and I hope he plays to his potential because I believe if he played to his potential, he'd be a top 10 quarterback easily. But I can't sit here and say if the Giants have an opportunity to upgrade a position, not to do it. I'm not that full of Kool-Aid. I'm not that obsessed with one player. I like Daniel Jones. I support the guy. I want him to be a good NFL pro. I want him to continue his career. Even if it's not in New York, I hope he goes somewhere else and I hope he shines and I hope he has a long, successful career. But you have a guy that perhaps could be an upgrade. You can't you can't just pass on it. And I I hate to tell this to you guys, the guys like Sunshine and Rainbows telling you, oh, the Giants going to move up to one, two or three. That's not happening. Okay, if the Chicago Bears trade their trade, Justin Fields, Atlanta Falcons. There is no way they're moving out of that spot. So you can forget about number one. Washington is not trading with the Giants. That's number two. And the Patriots need a franchise quarterback. They're not going back with Mac Jones. And they're not going to sign a guy like Sam Darnold. Let's be honest, okay? They have an opportunity to draft a franchise quarterback. They're going to go with whomever's left at three. And quite honestly, if J.J. McCarthy keeps going up the draft boards, he could be the guy that goes at three. So let's be realistic, okay? I guess it comes down to this. Do you or go going with the high tier quarterback and you wait to the second round? Now, there's people who believe that guys like Michael Penix Jr. and Bo Nix are going to be around. They're not. I did two mock drafts. I have Michael Penix Jr. going to the Raiders. I had him twice going to the Raiders in my two mocks so far. And I have Bo Nix going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're not making those guys, those top tier guys, the six guys that I feel that are close to the top are not going to be available when the Giants come around in the second round with their first pick. So the Giants have to make a move. So at this point, should the Giants draft J.J. McCarthy at six? I've kind of shied against it. My two mocks, I did not want to do it because I wanted to do the safe thing. I wanted to do the, I guess, the the uncontroversial thing, and that is stick with the chalk, okay? Stick with your chalk pick, which would be basically top wide receiver on the board, 
One week it was Roma Dunze. The, this week it was Malik Neighbors. You could go Joe Alt if, if the Chargers don't pick him. Or you can go for the home run. Put a quarterback, ride or die. Uh, that's the decision that Shane and Dable are going to have to make. You know, I talked about it. Honestly, you know, guys, I'm a straight shooter. I talked about during the season that I believed Shane and Dable want their guy. I believe they had no other choice but to sign Jones to extension. And the way it's structured, it really isn't a long-term extension. It's a two-year prove-it deal. There wasn't much to choose from. The Giants were drafting in the 20s last season. They didn't want to trade up, okay? And besides that, the Giants didn't like the free agent class. Who were the Giants going to going to sign from a free agent that was better than Daniel Jones? Let's be honest. Daniel Jones, off of his good 2022 season, you expected that he could at least provide the same. Everything possibly went wrong last season, okay? Starting week one, everything went wrong. You couldn't have envisioned a worse scenario for Daniel Jones. But you could still be a Daniel Jones supporter and a fan of him, but also want the best for the Giants, okay? And I know there's people who are snarky on Twitter. There's even people I used to do, I used to work with on Twitter who are snarky at the fact that, oh, we're going to go draft J.J. McCarthy. You know, he's not much of a difference from Daniel Jones. Perhaps he isn't. Listen, there is a high possibility that you could be drafting a backup or a bust. I mean, it's just, it's a it's a lottery. It's a crapshoot, okay? When you draft a quarterback in the first round, even guys like Caleb Williams, okay? People are acting like Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, they're short things. No, they're not. They're not. You go back to the 2018 draft. Guys like Sam Darnold, guys like Josh Rosen, Baker Mayfield, those guys were supposed to be, by this point, they were supposed to be pro, perennial pro bowlers. Baker Mayfield's trying to stay in the league as a starting quarterback. Darnold's already a backup, and Josh Rosen's going to be selling insurance or securities very soon. So, you know, it's it's like I said, it's a crapshoot. And the best quarterback out of all of them was Josh Allen. That's, that's the thing. That's the funny thing. So what do I believe? What do I believe? You know, what do I believe? I believe the Giants should do what's best for the Giants. Okay. If it's not drafting J.J. McCarthy, that means sticking with Daniel Jones for another year. I'm all, I'm all for it. If it means going with J.J. McCarthy or some other quarterback prospect, I'm fine with that as well. But I think you all can agree, and please let me know in the comments, I am tired of losing. 2020, 2011, we won the Super Bowl. Since then, it's been a lot of losing. It's been a lot of embarrassment. It's been a lot of pain, pain you know? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of losing. Hey, we're not going to win a Super Bowl every year. I understand that. You look at teams like the Washington Commanders and the Dallas Cowboys haven't won a Super Bowl since the 1990s. It's a very rare thing. That's why when it does happen, you need to cherish it. When the Giants make the playoffs, when you have a good season, you have to cherish it because it's not. It, look at the Jets. I don't think the Jets have made the playoffs since 2010. It doesn't happen every, every night. And look at teams like the Cincinnati Bengals, Cleveland Browns, Detroit Lions, Jacksonville Jaguars, teams that have never won. So I don't know, man. I don't know. But right now, I think the Giants have to at least entertain drafting McCarthy at six. And I know that's not going to make people have some people happy. I know a lot of people are going to be fine with it. That's cool. I believe that the Giants need to do what's best. And if that's McCarthy, I am all for it. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll be back during the week with more content. And until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>